Vic says you were spot on yesterday's live stream that USDJPY might retrace after checking one hour chart. How did you come to that conclusion since 4 hour candlestick already broke breakout and close above the previous high? Okay, so um, let's check the USDJPY first then. Then uh, we'll review some other markets together. Okay, so here is the daily time frame on the USDJPY. Um, hold on, maybe if I just do this, then you can see the whole screen. So, yep, yesterday uh, end up with a doji or pin bar, very tiny body, and long wick on one side. <clears throat> I'm, let me first talk about the daily time frame, and then get down to one hour and four hours. In terms of daily, looks like the market has been resisted by 143.53. So I was waiting for the breakout and follow up trend. So and then um, let me check the four hour. Four hour is also retracing. This is not below the Tenkan Sen, and Kumo Kijun Sen are up, but this is in the middle of the retracement. So today there was a fake breakout again on 143.53 but then the market started to retrace and now it broke the Tenkan Sen so from here it may be supported by the trend line this is one of the scenarios the market may be supported by the trend line and then it may be bullish because a bit, again it is retracing today but the price above the Tenkan price uh, is above the Kijun Sen and Kumo and Chikou span above the candles, so this is still bullish in that sense. So, and then um, let me check the one hour also. And one hour is also showing bearish right now. It broke the four again. It broke the four hour resistance, and then it just came down like this. So eventually, this breakout became fake and then the market simply retrace. So I simply create scenarios. Whenever I look at the markets, I never say the market will go up or it will go down. I never, I try not to say will, but if the market goes this way, then what to do? If the market goes that way, then what to do? In this case, I think I saw the resistance here, uh, 143.53. So. I thought that the market could retrace. Also, the daily shows its range. Now, Kijun Sen flat, Chikou Span is still very close to candles, and Kumo itself is still bearish. This light gray, light gray Kumo on my color setting is bearish Kumo, so this is not bullish in this case. So, today there was a fake breakout, and then the market actually coming down to that side. So, um, yeah, so this is after the event happens and, you know, we, we're not here to predict the future. We are not here to expect, we're not here to really read the future market directions, but rather we have to be logical whenever the market moves. On the next moves, depending on how the market moves, then you decide what to do. So now, again, in this case, 4 hour is now Retracing, there was a fake breakout. However, to me, this is still bullish. So the market could uh, be supported by the trend line and goes bullish. It's still my view. And also Senko Span A is up. Kijun Sen is also up. So to me, still it's bullish. But this is not the right timing to buy because the price is now coming down. So I wait for the bullish confirmation to buy. And how I capture the bullish confirmation is uh, based on the lower time frames usually. So let me also talk about how I look for an entry opportunity. So um, if I just go down to the M5 time frame, and then M5 shows that this is now bearish. On M5, I don't use Ichimoku anymore. I used to. I used to use Ichimoku. And I was using the part of the Ichimoku strategies, like the Kumo breakout, or Tenkan Sen Kijun Sen cross, or Chikou Span breakouts, but um, now I don't. Uh, especially since this year, I don't use Ichimoku 
in low time frames anymore because uh, it gives me some fake signals. But when I was back testing, uh, my pairs uh, on my watch list uh, long ago, a couple of uh, years ago, Ichimoku worked well in lower time frames like M5 or M15, but now they don't really work well, so that's why I took them out. But then now I'm using the Bollinger Bands and Stochastic to capture when to buy the market. And now, as you can see in M5, without looking at the indicators, I think this is clear that M5 is now bearish. Ever since here, ever since, since on the top, from the top of the market on M5, the market has been bearish. It has been bearish in waves. And here it consolidated, so it became range. And then the range breakout bearish. And then the market came back about to, to the resistance, to the previous support, which is this one over here, around this area, uh, 142.9. Uh, 142.79 is around the what I call the reversal level. Reversal level means the previous supports are now becoming resistances. And now looks like it's going bearish. So this is not the great timing to buy yet. So from here, uh, when would be the good entry time to buy? is I first check the candlesticks. Um, so I wait for, let's say in this case, if this become, becomes a W bottom, then 142.79 area will be the neckline of double, w, w bottom here. So I wait for the breakout of the neckline and buy. That's one of my scenarios. And then also, um, if the market breaks it, then it may retrace and then be supported and goes up also. So that's also the scenario to buy. So I wait for that, one of those scenarios to happen, and then um, buy the market, buy USJPY. And when this happens, when W, top, w bottom neckline breakout happens, then I also look at the indicators to see if I can find more confirmations from the indicators perspective. So I do look at the candlesticks and I don't really look at the indicators only like this. So because I think, I, again, like I mentioned before, the indicators are the translations of the candlesticks. So candlesticks are the rule. And then, based on that, based on how candlesticks are moving, there are indicators as a translation. So, if you first capture these entry opportunities by candlesticks, and then on top of that, if you add um, indicators um, confirmations, then that works better. So, that's my scenario to buy. Or the market may be resisted here again, then maybe bearish, but then it may break, bullish, like this. So that's also a good scenario to buy. And then I expect the market breaks the M5 resistances and then goes bullish. There are some minor resistances here or here. But once I see the buying opportunity, then I take a buy and then expect the market breaks those resistances and goes bullish. This is also one of the uh, challenges for um, new traders maybe, is which resistances break out to wait. If you look at the markets, there are so many resistances, so many supports. So when you try to buy, do, you, do I have to wait for this resistance breakout? Or this resistance breakout, or this one, or even up here on this one. So there are so many resistances to wait for. So you really have to know which resistance is strong and weak. And in this case, I can see that this 142.79 to be strong because this is a reversal level. Again, previous supports became resistances. 
So once it breaks that major resistance, then and if buyers follow the market, then the market most likely breaks the other resistances and goes bullish. It may consolidate on the resistance area, but overall should be bullish after this. So I simply uh, look at the buyers and sellers or putting, uh, buyers and sellers uh, power balance on any time frames, and I do use Ichimoku to capture equilibrium in high high time frames. And when I look for an entry opportunities like this, I also uh, read the buyers and sellers equilibrium from the candlesticks, and then decide what to do. So, yeah, so that's how I plan the trades. So again, for now, this is not the perfect time to buy because the market may come down still. The yellow line is the trend line from high time frame. So the market may break the trend line, then it may go down. So for now, I look for a buying opportunity. So. I think the best scenario is to wait for the neckline of W bottom and buy here. So I always do top down analysis. I always check from high time frame, from even weekly or sometimes monthly time frames, and then break it down to the daily and four hour and one hour M30, and then look for an opportunities by M5 or M15 time frames always from high to low time frames never go backwards because if you go backwards then you you only see this one and then you may think that this is bearish because it's coming down on m5 so you look for the selling opportunity but even if you sell here it may be fake and the market may be bullish and you never know why and because you didn't check the high time frame to be bullish on this one so that's really important to really see that uh, from high to lower time frames to look for an opportunities in my opinion I hope you become a non-losing trader in Ichimoku community I share the original knowledge of Ichimoku in KTS Academy I share my original strategy including risk and psychology management in GTI I mentor your trades and follow up one-on-one -on -one closely for the three months a survey to find out which course suits you the best. Thank you very much for watching the video until the end. If you liked it, please press like button and please subscribe. And until I see you next time, please stay healthy, stay safe, and stay gold. Bye for now. Matane. Thank you very much.